So I'm given this information. I have the information for the acid, for the base. I only have the molarity. I want to find Ka at that equivalence point. Really, Ka is not going to be not change for the acid at all, but I'm interested at that equivalence point. Okay. Uh, so here, what you do, it's really similar to the previous problem we did. It's just the reverse of it. I'm not given Ka, uh, but I am told it's that equivalence point. So what you do in this case, at the equivalence point, you know that the millimoles of acid equals the millimoles of base. So I want to find that volume. That's one thing I want to do. Um, so let's do that. This is 0.2 times that, 20 millimoles. So no, I know this must be 20 millimoles because they have to be equal. So if I back calculate the volume of this, this would have to be 50 milliliters. Okay, so now I have the volume there. Um, oh, uh, one, more, one more piece of information I'd have to be given to this problem. Let me get more chalk here. I'm also given H at point. That should be given the pH at the equivalence point to, to do this problem. Okay, so I know the millimoles of acid. I know it must be equal to the millimoles of base at the equivalence point. I back calculate to get 50 milliliters of that. Now I'm going to uh, set up the problem like I did earlier, saying, okay, I have this acid. Before I get to the uh, uh, ice part, the ice table part, I'm going to write this out just so we can see it. Okay, I have 20 of this and 20 of this. Since I have strong base in the reactants, it's going to force it to go to the right. So I'll subtract 20 from both sides, 0. I subtract 20 from the reactants, add it to the products. I don't really care about water. But I start off with 0 below Cl minus and end up with 20. So now I have 20 of OCl minus. That clues me in, oh, I'm doing a weak base calculation now. So I write OCl minus is all I have left, plus water goes to HOCl plus uh, OH minus. Now I can do the ice table. All I have left is one item. Maybe another way you can think of stoichiometry. When you've got both the acid and base in solution, you got to do that stoichiometry part, uh, especially if one's strong. Uh, if I'm now just left over one item, I can go straight to my ice table where something plus one. Okay, for this, I started off with the initial concentration of, uh, or the millimoles of 20. 20. I'm wondering what's the total volume, so I can change this to molarity. It's 100 plus 50, or 150. Ignore water. Uh, zero, zero. So I go minus x, plus x, plus x, 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 20 over 150 minus x. Now what do I do? I want to find Ka. Let me erase this right hand side. It's the reverse of a typical type problem that we would do. Uh, if, let's set up the problem. I have Kb would equal x squared over 20 over 150 minus x. So I have that. I know this is Kw over Ka. 
So I want to find Ka. I'm not given Kb. But what I am given in this sort of problem is x. So notice the pH is given. I didn't give you a number here because I just made up the problem. But the pH would be given. So what I could do, since I know pH, is negative log of H3O plus. And I know the pH, I can solve for the concentration of H3O plus. Again, the pH would be given some numerical value in this problem. So I can find the H3O plus concentration if I wanted to. And then I could find the OH minus concentration numerically if I wanted. It's Kw over H3O plus. So now I can find the hydroxide concentration. Why is that important? Because that oops, equals x. So once I know the hydroxide concentration, I would know x. And so over here in this equation, if they give me the pH, they're in other words saying, here's the value of x. Plug in for x, and you find Kb and eventually K. Is that all right? So this is another way to ask titration. Those are really the, probably, the, as far as I'm concerned, the three most common ways to word titration problems.